I think we've concluded, I, I believe that tranexamic acid is safe in, 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 in head injury patients, that it reduces head injury deaths, but that the statistical teaching has damaged science because we have stopped thinking and start, you know, it's, it's much easier to dichotomize than to think. It's much easier to have a decision rule than to use our judgment. I have a question. Yeah. So, uh, when you wrote the uh, uh, statistical analysis, uh, 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 so did you describe the statistical significance as in uh, five uh, p value of 5% or 95% confidence interval in your lab? Or so we, maybe, so we did not mention p values at all in the statistical analysis plan apart from heterogeneity p-values. It's the only p-value that I find acceptable is a heterogeneity p-value. So we, we, um, we only talked about heterogeneity p-values. We didn't talk about p-values at all. So there's no mention of p-values in our statistical analysis plan. We, ha we said we would present 90 relative risks and 95% confidence intervals. But that doesn't mean to say we're not inviting you to turn it into a p-value. We're not, like when you have a confidence interval and you look at it and you say, aha, the upper bound of the p-value of the confidence interval includes one. All you're doing in your, in your head is you're turning a confidence interval which contains, which is telling you lots more information. You're turning it into a p-value, and you're doing the dichotomization of positive and negative, less than 0 0.05, more than 0 0.05. So in our statistical analysis plan, we didn't mention p-values, but we, um, we, we talked about 95% confidence intervals. Does that answer your question? Do you feel happier or <laughs> or less happy or What if I couldn't hear that? And if you say do the job with something else, and if you are not supported by the P value now, so would you like now the decision will be a great one, my patient might die, mm. but I, I have no parameter to estimate who's going to that allergic reaction. But what if I am conducting a trial and I'm now in your position but my drug is inexpressive but has a serious side effect? Should I go to the public and say just give it a try? No, I, I think if you've got a side effects, that, that if you've got a, sig a significant side, you know, a meaning for, uh, significant to the patient, not statistically significant, if you've, got a, a, if you've got evidence of a side effect, then you have to start weighing off things. You have to say, ah, on the one hand, I've got this potential benefit. On the other hand, I've got this risk. And then you have to make judgments about, you know, the values of, of the, you know, the risks of the different things and the utilities of the different things. But in this case, the American Statistical Association, I don't think they said stop using p-values. But they said, stop dichotomizing on the basis of them, right? Because this P is less, stop saying that results are meaningful or not meaningful, depending on this arbitrary value, this arbitrary dichot dichotomization. That doesn't make any sense at all. You know, the, like, the, the null hypothesis, the, the, the P value is the probability that if the null hypothesis is true, that you'd get a result 
as, as extreme or more extreme by this, as this by chance alone. Now where does, and that, 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 that's a number that goes anything from one to zero, uh, but where does this 5% come from? It, it, it's not helpful, I don't think. And so results should not be dichotomized into positive or negative. They should be seen within the broader context of what's gone before, other trials in the area, biological insight, it all has to be brought together. Um, and so I do, do you, is, yeah, so I, I, I think statistical teaching, I think we have to learn to, as, you know, we have to learn to embrace uncertainty. And we have to weigh off the different, you know, we have to think, well, let, let's see, look, you know, what are the consequences given the point estimate? What are the, confident, confident, the consequences given, you know, sort of, you know, a smaller treatment effect or a larger treatment effect? What are the implications? You know, we have to make our judgments about that. But we have to make judgments. And, we, we, and I think dichotomization is a problem. Bad statistical statistician. <laughs> Fair enough. I have a question about yeah. Your yeah. Because the, the triboxamic acid reduces the mortality within 24 hours, and then it effect, it's effective to the mild to moderate TBI patients. Yeah. I think the mild to moderate patients will live, live long, not not deaths within 24 hours. Yeah, uh, what, what, okay, so, so what, I, what happens is that if you, have a, if you have a severe head injury, this is what I think is happening biologically, if you have a severe head injury, you're, you know, your bleeding in the brain can kill you on the day one. If you get tranexamic acid, the, it's less likely to kill you on day one. So that, so you're more likely to survive, if, if you have a mild, moderate, or severe head injury, you're more likely to survive, to be alive to day two, if you get tranexamic acid. But with any treatment, we only live to die from something else. You know, no treatment reduces mortality, it only delays mortality, because everybody dies in the end. So with tranexamic acid, you don't die on the first day. That's good. But you might die on the second, third, fourth, or fifth day. If you have a very severe head injury, you get a treatment benefit on the first day. You're more likely to survive the first day, but that doesn't necessarily mean you get out of hospital. You know, you, there's a, a big effect on whether you get out of hospital alive. But if you have a mild or moderate head injury, if you don't die on the first day, you've got a really good chance because nothing else is going to kill you. So I feel biologically that tranexamic acid probably has the same effect in everybody. And, that I, and for that reason, I would give it to everybody because getting a patient to survive the first day, why wouldn't I do that, you know? I, I feel it's just, um, it's effective in everybody on the first day, um, but it's all, all diluted out. Um, and it's, in high income countries, you get that benefit from the first day and, and it, you, you, it keeps the benefit because you de your chances of dying from something else are less. But in low, in, in low income countries, that if you have a severe head injury, you might get a treatment effect on the first day, but you're not going to get out of hospital alive. Because, you know, there are so many other things that are going to kill you. That's my interpretation of the results. <laughs> but, yeah, the, 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 the lady at the back, I don't feel like I'm defending my data. I, I, don't, I, I don't believe that it is a matter of defense. I'm trying to understand it. 
But if, if, if I really believed the treatment was absolutely useless or dangerous, that's what I would be telling you. I've got no stake in this treatment being effective or good. Because they don't have a p-value that's less than 0.05. Mm. Well, I, I taught um, a, a course on research integrity here uh, um, last year and the year before, and I met PhD students who were devastated that they didn't have a what they believed statistically significant result in their PhD because how and now are they going to get it published? And if they didn't feel they could get their PhD paper published, they, were re you know, they, they, would de they didn't think they would get their PhD. And they were searching around in their data for something that was significant at the 0.05 level. And it's, it's really bad for science. Yeah, I, I think they sometimes they imagine what editors think more than what editors really think, um, and they they get this focus on a p-value, and that and that leads to that leads to this sort of p-hacking, you know, where where you're searching around for a significant p for a less than 0.05, and then you you know exclude a few patients here and a few patients there, and you get the right you know get the right results. Yeah, I, I think it, it's, it degrades our thinking and it, it, it's, it's really bad for science, I think, that we, uh, that we dichotomize in this way. And that the editor of The Lancet does too, you know. This is a neutral result, quite close to the magical number of one. I mean, I don't know what they're talking about. But the good thing about the editor of The Lancet um, was that I, I spoke to him on the phone about it, and um, and he was convinced. You know, he, he he changed his mind. So, you know, I think it's good from that point of view. Uh, yeah. so may I ask how many rounds of exchanges you had with the editors? Well, it was all going very well. Um, they they sent the paper out for peer review. Uh, the paper was accepted. And it was just at the copy editing stages where they, there was this interchange between two editors, copy editors. And one said, oh, should we say this? Because P is less than, P is not more, you know, the, the confidence interval includes one. Should we say this? And then the other editor said, mm, maybe not. I, I'd said, we'd said, tranexamic acid reduces head injury deaths. And they... So the, the, there were three rounds of proofs because we want to get it all correct. The first round, the second round. In the third round, they added a word. And it said, we'd written, tranexamic acid reduces head injury deaths. And they'd add this word, might. Tranexamic acid might reduce head injury deaths. You know, it's like a taboon, <laughs> you know. I mean, we knew that before we did the trial. <laughs> so like, I, I felt I, I strongly objected to the inclusion of the word might because I thought, well, crumbs, I, you know, don't give me might. I knew that, but you, know, you could say that before we randomized 12,000 patients, that it might reduce head injury deaths. No, I, and I think it's a credit to them because um, they, I think it's because they were more clinical actually. 
that they actually saw the results more as in the gestalt, really. All oh, right, you know, it reduces, you know, there's evidence of treatment effect in the mild to moderate, as we'd expect. We wouldn't expect much of a treatment effect in the severe head injuries because they, 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 they have, you know, lots of intracranial bleeding at baseline. You know, you might say it's a subgroup analysis, our mild to moderate head injury, but it was a subgroup analysis that had, I don't know, six and a half thousand patients in. You know, it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't a trivial subgroup analysis. Um, so nobody, nobody objected, no. And the other thing I pointed out is, is, is the, um, that we ought to sort of look at the results in a more Bayesian way, really, that we ought to take into account what we already know about this treatment. Um, and maybe the null hypothesis isn't the right reference point. No, I, 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 I don't think so. I, I think it's, 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 it's a sort of, you know, taking into account what we already know. You know, it, it's like, uh, what is your sort of, it's like having a, a prior, you know. Well, in tranexamic acid reduces bleeding in surgery. It reduces extracranial hemorrhage. Most of the treatment effects is on the first day. And then we find in head injury patients, tranexamic acid reduces bleeding on the first, reduces head injury death on the first day. You know, how do you put all of that together? You know? Well, P, P, the P less than or more than 0.05 doesn't even come into it. You just, now you have to start thinking about, you know, biology and, and that's, you know, that's, that's what we should be thinking about, I think. Yeah. And after that, the two curves, after nine months, it almost uh, stable, like that. So they talk about the lifetime, the delayed effect of the treatment. I just wonder that in this case, of course, how can I say, uh, the, stati the improvement of the statistics should to, uh, let us to find the truth. Hmm. I was wondering about such kind of effect. Yeah. I think with the, with the, with the cancer example, with, when there was no benefit and then it, it, it appeared later on, I think you just have to, you have to interpret clinical trial results in the light of what we know about the biology of the drug, uh, how, you know, how, how it works. Um, Mm. But um, in this case, uh, in, in this case, I, th I think living, living, you know, s surviving the day of the injury. I don't know why we wouldn't offer that to a patient. You know, you know, even though they might not even though they might only die from something else. I don't know why we, and that was all pre-specified in the statistical analysis plan. We said the effect of tranexamic acid is predominantly on bleeding deaths. The bleeding deaths are in the are early deaths. So we're going to look at the effect of tranexamic acid on, this is our, our first secondary endpoint. We're gonna look at the effect of tranexamic acid on deaths within the first 24 hours. And, and you know, it was, 
exactly, you know, it was pre-specified. It was not, you know, speculative after the fact stuff. Uh, we found, you know, and so if you can get the patient through the first 24 hours, well, it sort of doesn't, this is what, I, so supposing the late deaths are from pneumonia, right? And we haven't got good treatments for pneumonia. So if the late deaths are for pneumonia, and the, the lack of an effective treatment for pneumonia seems to be affecting the eff efficacy of tranexamic acid. So it doesn't really make sense, does it? You know, that tranexamic acid is effective if we've got a good treatment for pneumonia, but not effective if we, if we don't have a good treatment for pneumonia. I think you've got to isolate, you've got to go for the biological effect that you think is important. And like li not dying on the first day of the injury is better than dying on the day of the injury, you know? And then, then we'll have to see, well, is there anything else we can do to stop them dying on the third and fourth and fifth and sixth day? But it's, you know, it's an interpretation. I think, I, I, I think we, unless anybody, any, any more questions or comments or, yeah, please. Uh, thank you for the nice presentation. I'm a basically hematology physician, yep. so I understand the result. Yep. Very, it, I think it is very reasonable. So, uh, can I ask, so this, I, I think this primary analysis and the result um, means the tranexamic acid uh, cannot reduce the mortality in all head injury, right? And it might reduce moderate to uh, minor head injury. Uh, so you say so the result. So estimation is a, like a continuous variable. So it is not dichotomous. So I. I Totally, I agree with it. However, mm. uh, the trial, clinical trial, is so um, answer the. Uh, it is. It cannot reduce all the all all head injury. Is it correct? So so I, I think. Well, I, I think that's the question. I mean, that's the the the, the practical question, is. Um, who do you give it to? Do you give it to all head injuries as soon as possible, or do you, do you only give it to the mild and moderate patients? Usually, so I, I give all the patients. Yeah, I would do the same, because, um, because I think it reduces, it reduces the risk of dying on the day of the injury in everybody. But... And those are the oranges, right? There's a treatment effect on the first day. And that's probably for everybody. But it's if you have really bad head injury, you're going to die of, you, you've got a really high chance of dying from something else. But still, it, it doesn't mean to say that this isn't worthwhile. You know, not dying on the day of the injury is good. You know, you, but you only live to die from something else, and that's bad. But you know, you, you would give the patient the mechanistic benefit that you, that you feel, that that's how I interpret the results. In fact, clinicians are, are much more naturally intuitive in statistics, I think, so in that sense. You know, um, it's almost like a little knowledge is a dangerous thing, but, you know, you, you've, it, it, yeah, but I, I agree with your interpretation. Yeah, I, I totally agree with the uh, understanding so the result is continuous, mm. so not dichotomous, mm. because uh, I am an emergency patient, so I every day uh, see the patient, so it's a, like a gray scale, mm. and the result is not uh, one point. 
Mm. So yeah, I, 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 your presentation is very interesting, and the discussion is very interesting mm. to me. So it's very valuable. Yeah, I, I think at, at the moment what's happening is that lots of different people in lots of different places are looking at the results and trying to make, okay, what, do they, what does this mean? And different, different people are coming up with different, different you know, interpretations, and that's very natural. Um, you know, some, you know, yeah. Do you expect the results to change the guidelines for management Yeah, I mean, I, I think they will. Um, they are doing so in the UK. Um, people are not, I mean, there was some conversation with guideline people saying that the results, what one of the people said that, you know, this is a negative trial, and then I sort of, I sort of objected to that, that use of language. But, um, I mean, there's guidelines, processes, and then there's clinicians themselves. And, you know, what, they're related to each other, but clinicians can do what they, I mean, I got, uh, I've had a lot, yeah. Different people will be doing different things. But what I would like them to do is try and look at them all, take everything they know about the treatment and the condition and try and, you know, synthesize it all. And the sort of, and not sort of just dismiss it quickly. You know, I think it's a lot of information. It's the, biggest head in, it's the biggest head injury trial ever conducted. And if we just sort of throw it away on the basis of the p-value for the primary endpoint, that would be a big waste, I think. More questions? No. In that case, thank you very much for sharing. <laughs>